Hey everyone, Alex and Joe. We're going to go over our weekly recap. This week, we spent all of our time stuck on the bottom of the mount position. And let's face it, this isn't fun for anyone to train, but it's important to train. Uh, on another note, as we move into our open mat time, it's important to start rolls during open mat from these positions. These negative positions no one wants to be in. Take some time, start some open mat rolls from that position, just like we did today. Really take the time to get comfortable there. Being stuck on the bottom is half of jiu-jitsu, and quite frankly, when you start at the white blue belt level, that's a larger part than half of jiu-jitsu, so you must be comfortable there. None of your escapes are going to work unless you're comfortable building space there. So take some time to start some rolls. From the technical side, we need to come back to this. We spent last week working sweeps. That puts people on bottom mount a lot, so we need to take some time to get out of it. So, Joe and I are going to demonstrate a quick escape chain that starts fundamental and moves up the difficulty scale a little bit. I see this escape get used, this foot drag escape get used a lot, and I see a couple little things get done improperly that can make your life a lot easier. So we're going to come in and the first thing I'm going to do is make a brace at his belt line at the hip and make a brace with my other hand. My, uh, my forearm's down, it's elbow to my side, and my forearm will be running right down his femur. This prevents him from weighting my diaphragm and making it hard for me to breathe. From here, I need to get onto my side to hook this foot for my foot drag escape. What I see most people do is try and just turn, and this becomes very difficult and, power, uh, and a power move to try and turn onto my side. What we need to do is utilize that fundamental of jiu-jitsu, the bridge and shrimp. So it's bridge, shrimp, and all of a sudden my life becomes much easier. He goes ahead and drops this knee back, and I'm right here, I'm on my side. From here, I'm still maintaining position on this, I can control the knee with this forearm. I start pressuring my knee up under his foot. This leg steps over the top, hooks his foot, and now it's going to drag it right over, hence the foot drag escape. From here, my bottom foot's immediately going to hook up, and I like to triangle this to hold on to it. I'm almost in an escape position now. I'm still stuck in mount, but I've really started control of this leg. From here, I'm going to take my arms, I'm going to extend my spine, not pushing with my arms, I'm extending my spine and then putting my arms in a locked skeletal position. This is a radical difference than pushing here. Extend the back, put the hands into block. You'll notice when I put these blocking hands in and I extend the back, I get space under the knee. So I'm bringing this knee up now and I'm sliding underneath. These hands are just going to provide counterforce. I can push a little, but really this is the bulk of the motion. Always easier to move me than to move my partner. From here, I use my back foot to plant, and again, bridge a little, shrimp. Notice where I'm coming to, I'm setting my half guard up. I bring this foot down, I'm pinching here to maintain control of this knee so he can't back step. This foot still hooked over the back of his calf so he can't back step out. Again, shrimp. Now I'm on my other side, I can keep this bite in, I can triangle my legs, and this hand digs for my underhook. And now I've set up a proper, nice, tight half guard position. So, climbing that position the ladder. Now, when I start this movement, savvy players are going to move to what's called a modified mount. Very common. My escape starts because I'm looking for my most fundamental, my most high percentage escape. So I'm going to start for my foot drag escape. As I bridge and shrimp to my side, what you'll do is you'll see people slide into this modified mount position where now they bring their knee up off the ground so I can't escape underneath it, and they bring this heel in tight to my hips. Again, we're going to use that extension element on my body. I'm here, elbows are tight, I'm going to check the calf. In Gi Jiu Jitsu, I'll actually grab this pant leg, both hands, because that's going to stop and plant that leg in position. From here, I'm going to lift my hips like a bump, and then I'm going to shrimp away. And I might need to do this twice. Now as I'm here, notice I'm not pushing with my arms, I'm moving my body. Much more power in my core than my arms. Look at this space I open up. Now, the first response is people typically tend to bring this low knee in. This is difficult because of the structure of the foot and it limits my attack options. So from here, my bottom leg's gonna come through, excuse me, my top leg comes through, slides directly under that knee, and then immediately drives up and I come into this position. From here, my bottom leg stays about heel height. I don't want to leave it on the floor because he can back step out. I want this foot trapped. 
So this leg scissors up, this leg scissors down, and again I'm using that body extension to get the proper manipulation. And he goes back. There are several variations of this. This is the most fundamental. Once I'm here, I want to build connection, build connection, and now again, going back to my fundamentals, I keep this pressure with my shin. This makes it difficult. If I've got no pressure here, he's free to move his hips and start countering and do so effectively. If I pressure here, go ahead and move now, he's locked. And this lets me transition out and move into whatever guard pass I want to do. So, our foot drag escape to our modified mount escape, both fundamental elements of the guard, or excuse me, of the mount escape from the bottom. They are not fun to drill. It always sucks having someone on top of you crushing you, but they're important components, especially early in your journey, and just as important later when you're sharpening that sword and making everything better and better as you go. Um, so stay on these, practice them. Don't think about the gross motor functions of the push and the yank. Think about the bridges and the shrimps and the proper skeletal structure with the extension of the back. It's going to pay off dividends in the future when you get guys that are really good at pressure on you. All right. That's it for today. Joe and Alex, we'll catch you next week with our recap.